Hi, in this tutorial I want to go over some more features that you'll find in the drawings of Autodesk Fusion 360. Now in the last tutorial we brought our drawing to this point and we went over some of the very basics of the different tools and features that are included here. Now I want to draw your attention to the detail tool because this is something that you may be using a lot um, within your drawings and you can see that this circle is calling out this detail right here. Now I can take this circle and I can click on this point and drag it in or drag it out and that's going to change the actual section that comes up. So you can see that the section has resized. Now in addition to that we created both a breakout detailed section as well as a cross section and you can see that it actually denotes it here. It says section BB scale 1 and detail A scale 2 to 1. Now those are really important notes but the, the font size is enormous. We want to scale that down. I'm going to show you how to do that. Double click on it and what you want to do is just select all the text and you can simply come up to where it says text here in this box and select a different value. So I'm going to choose 0.12. That's half the size. And you can just close and that's automatically going to update. Same thing with this one. Select everything and you can make it 0.12. And you can change your font as well if, if you really want to. But we're going to leave it uh, the way it is now. Uh, that being said, um, I want to go over a little bit more about dimensions. Now in the last video we looked at some basic dimensions for the sizing here. So you can see I have um, a, an overall dimension for the horizontal and vertical. But I want to show you how you can add um, some more specific dimensions. So I'm going to use the middle mouse wheel to scroll in on my views. And now that I've scrolled in, I can come over here to dimensions, click on the arrow, and I'm going to come down to diameter dimension. With it selected, I'm going to scroll in even further, and I'm going to click on this edge right here. And I can place this dimension right here. And then after you place a dimension, usually you just want to hit escape. Because when you hit escape, it brings you out of the dimension tool. So you're not going to accidentally click on some, on some line and it's going to pull out a dimension. From here, I want to come down to dimensions again and I'm going to click on radius dimension. Now I can scroll in very far and I can click on this radius and I can just place this radius dimension right here. Let's do that again, except now I want to choose angular dimension. And I can zoom in here and I can click on this line and I can click on this line. And between them I can create a dimension. Now you see that this says 165.88. If you drag this here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show um, the uh, supplement, the supplementary dimension. Um, that's 14.12. So these these um, angles are supplementary to each other and this is the other side of it. So I um, just want to show that again. 165 and then you drag in and you get 14 degrees. And you can also drag it this way and get 165 this way or 14 this way. So I'm going to drag this out and place it. And now that we know how to place dimensions, what we want to do is click on one of the, our dimensions. So I'm going to click on this diameter right here. And I'm going to change the primary precision. So I want this to be three place decimals. I can select it from the list. And if I want, I can also set a tolerance on this dimension. I'm going to come over here to type and I'm going to click on deviation. And if I'd like, I can change this to be five thousandths of an inch for the upper tolerance. And I can leave my lower tolerance at ten thousandths. And under representation, I can also change this to be, say, a reference dimension or not to scale. And you can also do a basic dimension, so theoretically exact. Same thing as basic. I can also click on inspection, and if I'd like, I can make this an inspection dimension as well. So with that said, I'm going to um, leave it at this. 
and I'm just going to close. And I can just drag this in by clicking on this point on a dimension. I can also click on this view and I can click on this point to drag it to the side. And now I'm going to just move this over. I'm going to, to edit this dimension here. So I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to click on alternate units for this dimension. Now from here you can see that uh, millimeters automatically comes up. That's because um, the alternate to the imperial units is the metric system and that's what it's using here, um, especially for a dimension this size. It's going to come up um, with millimeters um, where are the inches uh, alongside inches. So from here I can change the alternate precision. I can make this three place decimals as well if I'd, if I'd like to. And I just have to close this. I don't have to hit apply or anything. And that's automatically going to set itself. And I can drag this out if I'd like. And that's going to be that dimension. So another thing that we may need to do is we may need to set a dimension on the thread. The way to do that is we're going to zoom in. And since smart features and smart dimensions for threads are not necessarily released yet, uh, they may be released by the time that you see this video, um, the way to dimension the thread is to click over here on the dimension. And I'm going to dimension the um, major diameter of the thread. And I'm just going to place that here. And just like we said before, I can double click on this and change the precision. And from here, I can also um, change, I'm sorry, uh, make a dimension from this point to the end. And that's the full um, length of this partial thread. I'm going to make that three place as well. And I can also make a dimension for the thread itself, the size of the thread. You can just select a point here. And you can just drag this um, wherever you see fit. I'm going to place this about here. And I can make this three place as well. And the other thing is I can come over here to leader and I can just place a, um, a note that just says the designation. Now we know the designation for this thread. It's a 916-20 UN and it's 3A. So that's what I'm going to write in there. And we know that from when we designed this um, pedal in one of the other tutorials. So uh, that's what I'm going to leave here for the note. Now, there are definitely other dimensions that we can add, but um, this is a way that, that you can type in the whole designation. And if you need to, um, if this was, say, a hole or something else, you can always come over to symbols and change this. So I could, I could throw... I can insert a diameter symbol right in front of here if I want. And I can also come over here and say, well, you know, it has a, I mean, this doesn't have a counterbore, but you could put a counterbore dimension and then type in a counterbore symbol and then put a counterbore dimensions, or you can put in, say, a countersink or, a, or even GD and T symbols um, as you need. So I'm just going to delete that because that's not doesn't actually exist. And over here, you can see that my diameter symbol didn't come up. Now, this happens sometimes. Um, it depends on the way that the part was modeled. That's what uh, changes it. So all you have to do is just insert a symbol, insert a diameter symbol, and it's going to insert it for you. The last thing I'm going to go over in this tutorial is how to insert a picture into your drawing. Now this happens sometimes when you need to take a photo of a part or assembly because the drawing does not explain it well enough. Maybe it's cable harness routing, something like that that you just need a photo of. 
So the way to do that is I'm going to come over here to insert, click on the arrow and click on image. And I just have to simply select my JPEG image or whatever type of image I have from the folder, hit open, and I can just place it. And you're going to see on the right side, we can also change the rotation angle and the scale as you would expect. So I'm just going to come over here and place this here. And if I'd like, I can mess around with those um, changes. And we're going to just about leave that there. And that pretty much sums up um, this tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you got a lot of value out of this video. Thank you.